back, relax, and maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hey guys, and welcome to my Getting Graphic 4.0, I think it is, um, readathon. I've got some drink, blackcurrant squash, some snacks as well, some crunchies to keep me going with a bit of energy later on. And then I've also got my TBR, which is sat down here next to me. The plan is to start reading as soon as it hits midnight, hopefully go for basically as long as I can keep my eyes open. I'm trying to decide what I want to start reading. I think probably the best idea would be to start with this monster, which is actually about monsters and then I think probably once I've done that I'll break it up with something really short like Descender. I actually have the volume before this to read first so I will read that before this one but I've got a couple of volumes um, like shorter volumes that I can dip into in between as well. Hey guys so it's just gone one in the morning which means I have been reading for about an hour. I've been on Twitter a lot which has been really really fun. That is the best it just it really makes like readathons worth doing and I've also been reading I've been reading this one I now just have about a hundred pages left so I'm hoping maybe I could finish it well I definitely will finish it today but I'm not sure if I'll finish it before I go to bed I definitely find this one interesting there's some really controversial things in terms of the naming the insults the content it's definitely got like rape and abuse and torture, reference to Nazism and there is Jew bashing and just general lots of bashing of different minority groups and people and sexualities and things like that so there's a lot of stuff in here that's a bit controversial but I think the author is commenting on it in a way to say this is bad, this is current and this is our, our history and then the author kind of wants to change your perception on that by giving us a main character who is attracted to women and is female and by kind of taking us on this journey to see into the past of some of the characters and I'm definitely intrigued I do think that some of the pages from this are absolutely beautiful not sure what rating it's on yet I'd say maybe a three but I'm just I'm not sure it depends how the ending goes hey guys so it is about 10 minutes until 2 in the morning so it's quite late now and I just finished up this one my favourite thing is Monsters. I definitely enjoyed it, but it's a super, super weird book. I believe it's only the first one, and there's going to be others in the series, so I'm not sure if I'm going to pick them up or not. I love the art style. The art style is just beautiful. It uses like pencils and biros and lots of different coloured pens, and it's just vibrant, and the author and the illustrator is fantastic at doing people and bringing them to life, and it really kind of floats off the page at you, and some of the things that the author manages to bring to life are just creepy and crazy and bizarre and wacky and interesting, so I really like that element. But in terms of the overarching story, it was a bit lacklustre at times and it's a bit confusing and weird because it jumps around this plot it's kind of like a murder mystery plot and we have a main character who believes that she is a monster and so she illustrates herself into the story and we kind of follow her as she tries to investigate what's been going on so i definitely liked bits of it but i just think overall it was kind of middle of the road I guess but yeah it was an interesting read and I'm glad I got to it so that is my first read and that is a chunky old read so I'm pretty happy that I finished this one up so my next plan is to go for a little nap I'm feeling quite tired now because it's almost two in the morning so I'm gonna have a nap for a couple of hours and hopefully I will feel rejuvenated after that to get up and do a lot more reading once the day begins. Hey guys, so it is now about just gone eight in the morning. I went to bed at two in the morning and then I got up at half six in the morning. So I had four and a half hours sleep. I thought that might just be enough to tide me over for a couple more hours. So I just finished reading this one, which is Above the Timberline. This is quite different from what I expected it to be. It's about an expedition that goes up into some sort of arctic range. It's set in the future by about 
just over a thousand years and something happened to the world that means all of the tectonic plates have shifted and there's a new frozen arctic that's been redefined and everyone sort of lives in this futuristic technological world where airships are the main mode of transport and particularly for sort of expeditions they seem to be the main mode of transport along with kind of advanced snowmobiles I suppose. Um, so we follow a young son called Wes who is going hunting for his father Galen who's got lost and gone missing in the wilds and the depths of the ice. He apparently was with an expedition to go and find a lost city and Wes wants to go and find him because he believes he is the only surviving member of the crew and he wants to just rekindle his love and family with his father and he just wants to find him and he can't accept that he's just stuck out there. So he mounts a rescue mission to go and find his father and hopefully save the day and that's what we follow in this book and along the way we also follow um, some really beautiful art panels and also the polar bears who are pretty cool I must admit. So yeah I really enjoyed this, not great at painting on canvas and this author is definitely great at painting on canvas so I was thoroughly impressed by some of the spreads I'll admit. And I certainly enjoyed this one. I think um, of this one and my favourite thing is monsters. I'm not sure which one I like more. I think the stories are definitely different and the story of this one was better. But I think the art style of the other is still one that I really appreciate. So maybe they're both about the same. So yeah, that is one of my challenges completed, which is standalone. So I'm happy that I've completed that. And now I'm going to go on to continuous series, I think, maybe with Descender. morning guys so it is just gone nine or about to turn nine um, and I just left home because I wanted to go and get some snacks because I realized <laughs> that a 24-hour readathon without snacks is gonna be hard so it's a beautiful day today as you can probably see the sky is so blue oh, it's amazing weather for England I don't know where it's come from but I'm so happy it's here for readathon day <laughs> So I think my plan is to go get some snacks and then once I get back from getting snacks I will probably try and sit in the garden or maybe take a little stroll down to a local park, something like that because it's just too beautiful not to be outside really. Hey guys, so snacks have been acquired and I'm now heading home to set up for the day and hopefully get a good amount of reading done. Hey guys, so it is now about half past nine. I'm back. I have set up in the garden. Um, you can maybe see behind me, I've got a chair. So that's all set up with the books I'm about to read. And then below that, I've got my little water bottle down here. I'm drinking peach flavored water, which is very yummy. And then down here, I've got all my books and then under this coat, because at the moment it's so like early that it's hot out in the temperature, but then the dew on the ground has not dried up yet, it's not been evaporated, so it's really wet on the ground, which is why I'm sitting on a chair and not on the grass, and why I've got my coat on the ground so that the books don't get wet and the snacks don't get wet. But all the snacks I've got, well, all the ones that don't need to be in the fridge, are underneath the hood down here, so they are hiding from the sun. So I have Descender Volume 4 to read, I also have Descender Volume 5, and this will continue a series. So. I don't think that six is out yet, but I might be wrong. If it is, correct me. But obviously I'll be getting it probably once I finish those two and when it comes out. But I really love this series. It's about a little robot who goes on an adventure to try and find his family after he gets lost and separated from them. And it's really cute and really dramatic and exciting. And the art style is absolutely beautiful so far anyway. So I'm hoping that I'll love the other two. I'm sure I will. I feel confident saying that. So yeah, that is kind of what I've been up to so far. And what I'm about to get on with so wish me luck and I'll update you when I have some more to say and probably when I'm sweltering because it's already really hot just standing here. Hey guys so it's about 20 to 11 in the morning now and I have now read the next two books that I was planning on which was volume four of Descender. Really enjoyed this it was a really easy getting back into the world. I think this is one of the comic series that I find the easiest to just slip back into the world even though there's quite a lot going on and it's set across very different planets and we follow lots of different characters some are machines and some are humans and some are kind of in between like 
evolutionized versions of humans and robots and kind of combined they're really cool um the ideas that they come up with for this story are really fun and i also really like the fact that there's a lot of good versus bad it kind of harks back to like the classic superhero tropes and good guys and bad guys but it also has some really grey areas and characters who are particularly grey and don't necessarily fit into one box or the other so I definitely enjoyed this one and then I went straight on to read this one which is the fifth volume really enjoyed this one too the stakes get really high in this one and we see a lot more of a conflict between the robots and humanity which is something that we've been kind of building up to over the past couple of books so I really enjoyed kind of seeing how that developed and yeah definitely going to carry on with the series and hopefully find out what happens next because it's really dramatic and exciting so yeah really love both of those. I think my next port of call might be to read non-fiction so this is the one I chose for the non-fiction challenge it's Harry Potter a history of magic it's quite a chunky book so it'll probably take me a while. Look guys even my little kitty couldn't resist coming out because it's so sunny and warm so she is loving just chilling in the sun. Well, kind of in the shade. But she's loving being out here too. Aren't you, beauty? Nope, she's gonna ignore me and snooze. Oh, so cute. Hey guys, so it's almost one o'clock in the afternoon now. I went in and had some lunch about half an hour or so ago and I've been reading this book which looks very beautiful without the dust jacket. It is the History of Magic, um, the Harry Potter British Library Collection companion book I suppose. Um, I am really enjoying this, it's definitely interesting, it kind of links into our own history of magic. So, so far I've learned a little bit about how the plants that are used in Harry Potter are mostly based in reality. There are a few she made up but particularly like the mandrake is a plant that is used in today, like it's a real thing, it's actually used um, kind of as a hallucinogenic or an anesthetic in a lot of things so it's quite cool to see that and the fact that in reality the mandrake root actually does quite look like a human is really fascinating and then I also have learned about like the cauldrons that witches use and the way that we once had a cauldron wash up in the Thames and it was found um, I think in the 1800s it was and yet it was hundreds of years older than that and it's still in pristine condition looks really cool so there's a lot to learn in this that I just I had no idea about and I'm really really enjoying learning from the book about all of these amazing little tidbits and I think it's a really thorough look at different aspects of Harry Potter so far and kind of their applications in our real world so I'm really enjoying it um, I've read the first three chapters I think there's about nine chapters or so I'm not sure um, but there's quite a few so each chapter focuses on one of the lessons so there's like herbology charms potions things like that so the next one I need to read is charms and in the chapter you get sort of reference to some of the things that Jim Kay has illustrated for the illustrated editions and you also get a lot of reference to um, collections of things that the British Library has or other parts that the British Library was loaned for the exhibition. So it's a really interesting read and I definitely would recommend it so far. Um, really, really enjoying it. However, it is quite dense and quite a long read because it's over 240-ish pages. So I think what I might do is break it up with a shorter graphic novel in the middle. Now that I've kind of come to the end of a chapter, it seems like a good place to take a break and read something else for a bit. So I might do that just to break it up and then come back to this a little bit later in the day. But I am really, really enjoying this. So that is my update so far. Hey guys, so I moved my chair around so that I was the other way so that I got tan on that side instead of just on one side. And I finished another book as well so I thought I would show you. So that was this one, Lady Mechanica, La Dama della Morte. I probably pronounced that wrong but anyway, I finished this one. It's actually a reread for me because I read the first um, 
at least the first few issues in single issue on Comixology a while ago and I really enjoyed it. I love this series. I love the art style. I think Lady Mechanica is a proper badass character. She definitely does wear like pin up sexy clothes but I think she does a really great job of just being a, a prime example of badassery I suppose. So I really enjoy her as a character and I have been loving the series in general and this is a standalone kind of set in the same series but you can read it completely on its own. So yeah, really enjoyed this and loved the art style and again I'll put some pictures of the art style up because yeah, it's beautiful. Hey beauty, look who's just come to join me. She's decided she wants to sit in my shadow instead. <laughs> Hey guys, so I just finished reading This Beast, really enjoyed it, definitely glad that I've added it to my collection and that now I can say I've actually read it, but it was a really insightful, interesting book as I mentioned before, I learned a lot of different tidbits about our history and then just enjoyed seeing behind the scenes of actual Harry Potter stuff too, because there were quite a lot of deleted scenes that JK Rowling had kept, scenes that she had had back from her editor and she was kind of annotating and we saw some of the notes of that and then there was all the way back to like some original drawings that she had done of the characters which I'd never seen before and also original writing of some of the scenes that she hand wrote before she typed them up or anything so that was really cool um, and a lot of the deleted scenes were there and it was just generally really interesting so if you are a Harry Potter fan I definitely would still recommend this and I really enjoyed it. Hey guys so as you can see I kind of came back inside because it was getting a bit shady in my garden and I carried on reading so I've just finished up this one which is One Soul by Ray Fawkes. I read this one because it counted for the challenge of reading a book with blue on the cover and obviously this has a lot of blue although the inside of the book is all just black and white white so there's no blue on the inside but I didn't love this one I think it's definitely my least favorite of the day so far um, this author tries to do some interesting stuff he tells multiple stories in tandem and I read one of his books before but I think that one was a little bit better it focused on couples the other book whereas this focuses on individuals and I feel like it's just a bit wishy-washy in places each panel represents one individual and there are I think nine on each page so there's 18 in total that you're following and of course that's quite a lot of storylines and each one is quite spread out and the author doesn't use a lot of words um, and the words that they do use are often quite vague and don't really give you an awful lot of information about who the people are. It kind of is a summation of their feelings a lot of the time but it doesn't always give you that insight into their backstory. So for me this was just like an okay read. So the challenge I have left is to start a new series and that one I'm going to use this for, Dead Big Class. I've not read any in this series and I've heard a couple people talk about it um, and it sounds good. So this will be my next read of the day and it's about four o'clock now so I've still got <laughs> ages obviously I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it all the way through that would be quite impressive but so far I'm running just on my four and a half hour sleep this morning um, and I'm doing okay so I'm hoping I can at least make it until you know maybe it gets dark or something like that which is about eight or nine. Hey guys so I just completed all the challenges yay so I finished reading Deadly Class volume one definitely enjoyed this um it's pretty brutal it's definitely got a lot of adult content in there but I think it's still a really fun graphic novel series and it's definitely one that I think I'll carry on with. It's about a guy who is homeless, he lives on the streets, he's having a pretty bad life and he gets into a scrape with some cops at the beginning of the book and he gets rescued by a girl on a motorbike who takes him to a secret school where they train assassins and he joins the school and that is where the story kind of begins. So I wasn't sure what I was going to make of this, it's set in the 80s and it's definitely in not um, England it's set in America I believe there's definitely like insults and racism and things like that in here there are cliques within the school where different types of people kind of hang out with them their own image and stuff like that but I guess that's kind of high school in a nutshell as well so it does make sense it's interesting as a concept um, I like the idea of a school of assassins not that I would want to go to one myself but in concept it seems interesting so so far so good um, I'll probably pick up the next volume at some point and read it I don't own it at the moment 
So yay, that means I've completed all the challenges. I'm really happy about that. Hey guys, so I just finished up this one, Porcelain Ivory Tower, which is the third volume of Porcelain. Really enjoyed it much as I have the last few. This one's a lot darker in tone. So in this one we're following a lady who is now called Mother and she is the mother of these two girls on the front cover and also all of these porcelain people that she creates in her world. It's a really magical heavy, science heavy kind of series and I really enjoy that combination. I love the creativity of the drawings, the art style is incredible. So genuinely really enjoyed this even though it's slightly different from the previous two in the series and kind of takes a slightly darker tone. So yeah, definitely happy I read that. Hey guys, so it's about 10 o'clock now and I just read another graphic novel. I'm on a proper roll. So this one is Morning Glories Volume 4. I read the first three quite a long time ago, so I was a little bit unsure how it would be going back into this. And this is a particularly long graphic novel, so I thought it would probably take me a while. It took me... I don't know, maybe an hour and a half to read the whole thing. It's quite long and I really enjoyed it. The art style is one that I really, really love and I just think that the story is really gruesome but definitely completely unique. This one particularly focuses on time travel and we have all these students in the school who are not really sure what they're doing and how they're doing it but they have kind of magical powers in a way. They can skip through time. There's loads of new characters who are introduced in this volume and I really really liked it. I can't really go into many details because obviously it's volume four so it would spoil things but I liked it a lot and I'm definitely planning to continue on with the series. I own the next three so I really should have continued on sooner but I plan to do so now because I have just reaffirmed my love with it I think. Hey guys so I am back and I just did the totaling up of all the pages and how long I'd been reading and all of that stuff so all my stats and I realised I've read nine books over the course of Getting Graphic and of those nine books I've enjoyed most of them. I think there was only one that I didn't really love that much and the rest of them I enjoyed, some of them I really liked. So I managed to read a total of around 17 and a half hours. I didn't time exactly but I know that I was sat out reading during those hours and I just had small breaks for like snacks and food and things like that. So most of that time was spent just solidly reading and I've managed to read 1,830 pages during that time. I finished all five of the challenges, so I'm really happy with that and managed to slip in a few extra ones as well. So I've managed to cut down my TBR quite a significant amount, so I'm really happy with that. And of the ones that I read, I think the ones I most enjoyed included Porcelain, I really liked that one. I loved Morning Glories, I thought that's probably my favorite of them so far. Harry Potter A History of Magic was really interesting, quite different because it is a non-fiction. And Descender Volume 4 and 5, I really enjoyed both of them and I fully need to catch up with that series. I also really liked Lady Mechanica but I had already read that so that was a reread for me. I probably need to catch up with some of these series. I think there are some that I am very far behind on like Morning Glories. I do own the next couple but I've not caught up yet and then Descender is obviously ongoing as is I think Lady Mechanica and Porcelain is also an ongoing series. I think I'm not sure exactly where that one's going to go next because it ended on quite a dramatic kind of cliffhanger um, but it definitely could go further so it'll be interesting to see where that goes next as well. But yeah I think I'm going to call it a day because <laughs> I'm getting really tired. It's like almost 11, it's half 10 or something like that. So I've done a pretty decent job with replying to tweets and everything else as well as reading just a whole load of stuff. So I'm really happy with that and I hope you guys had a great Getting Graphic Readathon too. I'm sure that Eleanor and I will again do it sometime. It's super fun and it was really nice that it was free comic book day on the same day. I wish I had a comic shop nearer to me so I could have gone and got some but next time maybe. So yeah, do let me know if you participated, what you ended up reading. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye guys! Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book and come back and chat with me.